So far we've looked at water, alcohols, and thiols as nucleophiles, and now it's time to turn our attention to amines. Amines react in an interesting way with ketones and aldehydes because the nitrogen nucleophile is significantly stronger than the water we would give off if we could convert the carbonyl oxygen into H2O+. And this tends to happen when amines react with ketones or aldehydes, so we end up with products of substitution. We'll talk more in more detail about that here in a second. Another interesting thing about amines is that we have an interesting mechanistic dichotomy that occurs depending on the substitution pattern of the amine. So I'm going to clean up this left-hand structure just a little bit because we're going to need a CH2 group right here in this case. And we're going to look at two cases, the two cases that are most important, a secondary amine with two R groups linked to the nitrogen and a primary amine in which only one R group is linked to the nitrogen. And I actually want to start with the primary amine case on the right because it's a little more straightforward to understand from a reactivity perspective. When we combine a primary amine with a carbonyl compound, usually we do this in the presence of catalytic acid. This just speeds up the reaction by facilitating nucleophilic addition. It does what all acid catalysts do and protonates the carbonyl carbon at the start of the mechanism. And the product we ultimately end up with doesn't look like an addition product. In fact, it looks like, almost magically, in a way, if you've never seen this before, the amine nitrogen has substituted for the carbonyl oxygen. Importantly, water is a byproduct of this reaction and helps us see how the elements balance on both sides. The two H's that used to belong to the amine are now in water, and the NR group is now part of the carbonyl compound, formerly carbonyl compound, while the oxygen is now found in water. This structure containing a CN double bond is called an imine. The CN double bond is referred to as the imine functional group, and you'll hear me refer to it again and again as a glorified carbonyl. It's a polarized pi bond in which nitrogen replaces oxygen, and so the chemistry of imines is highly analogous to the chemistry of ketones and aldehydes. This is, on the whole, a substitution process, right? We don't need to know anything about the mechanism to appreciate that a substitution of nitrogen for oxygen has occurred. And this reaction, as we'll see when we look at it in detail, has a number of similarities to nucleophilic acyl substitution in that it involves a nucleophilic addition followed by a beta elimination. It's a little bit more mechanistically complex than this, but really at the end of the day, all we're going to add to these key steps are proton transfers. A key difference from nucleophilic acyl substitution is that the starting ketone or aldehyde doesn't contain a good leaving group. In fact, what's going to happen in the midst of this reaction, and the same will happen in the secondary amine case, is that the oxygen of the carbonyl compound acts as a leaving group. And we haven't really seen this before, but the carbonyl oxygen, if we're able to get two hydrogens and a positive charge on that oxygen, it has the potential to act as a leaving group. And that's exactly what happens in the course of this mechanism. When a carbonyl compound, ketone or aldehyde, is combined with a secondary amine, we again typically use acid catalyst to accelerate this reaction. The product we get is not the same as the one we get over here. In fact, a substitution process still occurs. We have a carbon-nitrogen bond where we had a carbon-oxygen bond in the starting material. However, rather than ending up with a carbon-nitrogen double bond, which would be impossible in this case because of the two R groups without introducing positive charge on the nitrogen, we end up with a carbon-carbon double bond. And this compound is referred to as an enamine. It's called an enamine because it contains an alkene carbon-carbon double bond linked to an amino group, the NR2 group. The byproduct of this reaction is again water, and in fact drawing out the water again helps us see how the elements balance on both sides of this reaction. Notice that we're missing a hydrogen at the alpha carbon of the starting ketone or aldehyde. There's only one hydrogen at the alpha carbon of the enamine. We're also missing a hydrogen linked to the original amine substrate. Both of those are incorporated into water. Additionally, the carbonyl oxygen gets incorporated into water as well. Briefly ignoring the position of the double bond, we see again that what has essentially happened here is a substitution process. One nucleophile, the amine, has substituted for another, water. And just like amine formation, the essence here is an addition-elimination process, a nucleophilic addition followed by beta elimination, where again, the carbonyl oxygen is acting as a leaving group after the addition of hydrogens to it so that water is formed when it departs with a pair of electrons. 
Finally, one last thing that's worth mentioning here is that both of these reactions go through the same type of intermediate. And really, the moral of the story there, and the, the lesson to appreciate, is that nucleophilic addition is really the key to the reactivity of amines with ketones and aldehydes in both cases. Nucleophilic addition is the key first step. So whether we're headed toward an amine or an enamine, nucleophilic addition of the amine is the key first step. And I'm actually going to abbreviate this as R slash H to show that whether we're going to form an amine, which would be the case if the amine were primary, and we'd have an H linked to the nitrogen, or an enamine, which would be the case if we had an R group linked there. This intermediate is key to both pathways. So we can draw an arrow from the starting materials on the left to this intermediate, and from the starting materials on the right to this intermediate. This is called a hemiaminal. And it's called a hemiaminal because it contains a central carbon linked to an amino group and a hydroxyl group. Note the analogy to the hemiacetal. The hemiacetal had an OR group linked here. When we have an NR2 or an NRH group there, it's called a hemiaminal. Further reactivity of the hemiaminal gives rise to either the amine or the enamine. If we have a hydrogen on the nitrogen, that will be eliminated along with OH. That's the elimination of water to give the amine. But if there's no H linked to the nitrogen, Elimination of water involving a hydrogen linked to that nitrogen is obviously not possible. So instead, we eliminate from the alpha carbon, and that gives rise to the enamine. We'll look at these mechanisms in detail. I just wanted to present the general picture here first.